Hello, this is the daily COVID update from Deccan Herald. I'm Suraksha. I'm Akhil. On the bulletin today, Karnataka reports 30 new cases. CRPF and BSF battalions report COVID-19 cases. Karnataka makes plans to resume work from tomorrow. And Amulya brings us a roundup of pandemic from across the world with a focus on Africa. But first, a look at the national numbers from Akhil. At the time of the recording, more than 2,000 fresh cases have been reported from across the country today. Nearly 29,000 people are active carriers of the virus, more than 11,000 patients have recovered since they first tested, and the country has registered 1,391 COVID-related deaths so far. Nearly 42,000 cases have been reported from across India to date. The Indian Council of Medical Research has tested more than 10 lakh samples or 1 million samples from across the country since the first case was reported. As a comparison, New York has tested just under a million samples so far, and the U.S. has tested more than 6.8 million samples. A quick look at some of the state numbers now. Marsha continues to report the highest number of COVID-19 cases in the country. The state reported 678 new cases today, and Mumbai alone recorded 21 deaths. The state has more than 10,000 active cases. Gujarat reported 374 cases and has more than 4,000 active cases. Punjab added 330 new cases and is fast approaching 1,000 active cases. Uttar Pradesh and Rajasthan recorded 158 and 112 new cases each. Among the southern states, Tamil Nadu added 266 new cases and has over 1,600 active cases. 20 districts in India account for 68% of the total cases and also for 72% of the total deaths. These districts have been the worst hit of the country and are now falling short on health infrastructure. The center has sent medical teams to support the states in the implementation of containment measures. Karnataka has managed to avoid the scare. Not a single district appears on the list. The state has reported 13 new cases today. So far, 614 positive cases have been reported, out of which 295 cases are still active. Three patients are in the ICU and 293 patients have been discharged so far. This is good news as yesterday there were seven patients in the ICU. Today, five people were moved out of critical care. Also, if two more patients are discharged, the number of discharged patients will equal the number of active cases in the state. There have been 25 deaths in the state till date. Kalburgi has reported six new cases today, of which two are contacts of previously diagnosed patients. One patient has presented with severe acute respiratory illness. Two have presented with influenza-like illness and their contacts are under investigation. Contacts are under investigation for the last of the six. Bengaluru Urban reported four cases, of which one patient is from containment ward in Padarayanapura. Three others are contacts of previously diagnosed patient. Three cases have come in from Bagal Court, of which two in Mudol are contacts of a previously diagnosed patient and one in Badami has presented with Sari and this case is being investigated. According to Davangiri Deputy Commissioner Mahantesh Bilagi, 21 cases and one death have been reported from the district. We are awaiting confirmation from the State Health Department regarding these cases. Moving on to news from across the country with close to 521 deaths and 10,000 positive cases, Mumbai metropolitan region contributes to the maximum number of COVID-19 cases in the country. The MMR comprises three districts of Mumbai City, Mumbai Suburban and Thane and also parts of Palghar and Raigarh districts and constitutes around 2% of India's geographical area. It is also one of the most densely populated regions in the country which sees a high movement of people. Dharavi has itself registered more than 500 cases. In Delhi, CRPF and BSF forces have been hit by the COVID-19 scare. 40 officers and staff at the CRPF headquarters, including a special director general, have been home quarantined after a driver tested positive. The headquarters will remain closed until Tuesday morning. More than 100 CRPF personnel from various battalions have tested positive in other parts of Delhi. Besides CRPF, the border security force has also been affected with at least 42 personnel testing positive of across the country. Coimbedo Wholesale Market Complex, one of the largest vegetable, fruit and flower markets in the country, spread across nearly 300 acres, is emerging as the newest hotspot for COVID-19 infections in Tamil Nadu. More than 100 people, including vendors, labourers and buyers who went to the market complex spread across several districts, have tested positive for COVID-19. While 60 of the 100 are from Chennai alone, the remaining are from Kanchipuram, Tiruvallur, Villupuram, Ariyalur, Perambur and Kudalur districts. And news from Karnataka. The third leg of the lockdown kicks in tomorrow and the revised guidelines will govern life in the various zones. According to a notification from the Chief Secretary of Karnataka, Bengaluru Urban, Rural and Mysuru are in the red zone. 13 districts in the state have made it to the orange zone including Kalaburgi and 14 districts including Davangere are in the green zone. 
In another circular, the Chief Secretary has said that Bengaluru Rural, Bengaluru Urban, Ramnagara, Chikmalapur, and Kolar districts will be treated as a single unit for the purpose of vehicle removal between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Movement between these districts is allowed for permitted activities as long as individuals have a letter from the organization they are working in. All other districts require an inter-district movement pass and these will be issued by respective DCs and DCPs. Passes will only be issued for permitted activities. For those stranded away from home, a one-time pass will be issued. Essential services that have already been provided with passes will continue to be valid until the nighttime curfew between 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. The IT and BT sector will be issued curfew passes by their respective DCPs. According to another circular issued by the Chief Secretary, 100% turnout is expected from all categories of staff from departments identified as essential services from May 4th. The departments are Health and Family Welfare, Medical Education, Home, Revenue, Rural Development and Panchayat Raj, Urban Development, Food, Civil Supplies and Consumer Affairs, Information and Public Relations, Transport, Energy, Personnel and Administrative Reforms, Finance, including Treasuries, Animal Husbandry and Fisheries, Forest, Ecology and Environment, APMC Markets, Agriculture, Labor, and Horticulture. This circular also applies to all the red zones in Karnataka. For all of the, for all of the departments, all officers into Group A and B, along with 33% staff from Group C and D, are expected to resume work in the red zone areas from tomorrow. All categories of staff from all departments will be back at work in the orange and green zones starting tomorrow. Following criticism to charge laborers three times the normal bus fare to go home, the Karnataka government announced free travel arrangements for laborers for the next three days. KSRTC buses will not charge any fares for the laborers wanting to return to their native districts in the state. Moving on, in our international segment, Amulia takes a look at Africa, a continent that seems to have slipped from everybody's memory and its response to the pandemic. Amulia. As of this weekend, the number of people infected with the coronavirus may have crossed the 3 million mark, but the good news is that the number of recoveries from the, glo- from the virus has crossed 1 million. Singapore is recovering from its second wave of infection and New Zealand has downgraded the threat level which has led to the loosening of the lockdown. In Europe, the schools are opening even though there have been some concerns of, about the spread of the virus. However, there is very little talk about what is happening in the huge continent of Africa where it was predicted early on that the novel coronavirus might be especially devastating given the challenges regarding hospital infrastructure and the poorly trained staff. Since the first case of COVID-19 was detected in Egypt in February, Africa's number of cases has soared to 42,000 and the number of deaths has crossed 1,700. As per the Africa Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the northern part of the continent leads in the number of infection as well as the deaths with Egypt, Morocco and Algeria in the lead. In the southern part, almost all the cases have been reported from South Africa. These four countries account for more than half of the cases in the continent. The chances of a major outbreak in in other countries is a realistic fear right now. In Somalia and West Africa, Guardian reports that medics, funeral workers and grave diggers have reported an unprecedented surge of deaths in recent days, giving credence to the view that the official count of COVID-19 deaths reflect only a fraction of the viruses stored in Africa. Many countries including South Africa, Nigeria, Uganda, Rwanda, Kenya have imposed stringent lockdowns and curfews, which is not entirely new to the continent, which has seen its share of state violence. In Kenya, President Uhuru Kenyatta even apologized for over zealous policing. On May 1st, South Africa relaxed its lockdown with President Cyril Ramaphosa remarking, our people need to eat. The country is in recession and the president is trying to strike a balance between the public health and national economy. Uh, for the latter, he even announced a 26.9 billion economic stimulus and stress and social relief package amounting to about 10% of the nation's GDP. With the spread of the virus flattening elsewhere, Africa could be the next coronavirus hotspot. The continent has previous experience of handling HIV and Ebola outbreaks, which it has used successfully by coming up with some local innovations like the $1 coronavirus test kits developed by a laboratory in Senegal. Let's hope this experience will lead to many such inventions. Indeed. Thanks, Amolia, for that. Perhaps the answers to the pandemic will come from lesser-known nations. And before we go, if you've been worried about flu but you're not quite sure if it's COVID-19, here is a service that will send help your way. Call Apta Mitra at 14410, a medical helpline by the Karnataka government that helps you understand what to do next. That's all from Surakshan Me today. For the latest updates, log on to DeccanHerald.com. Stay safe and we'll see you tomorrow.